Hyde Park in Chicago, Illinois is an area that has changed drastically over the years and continues to change today. Residents of the neighborhood have faced hardship and eviction from their homes brought upon them by redevelopment. The implementation of Obama's presidential library is the newest project to come to Hyde Park. This library is being constructed in one of the area's only recreational parks. Current residents of Hyde Park have the same feeling towards this library as, res as residents of the 1950s did toward the Hyde Park redevelopment project. The library received a $5 million grant from the city of Chicago and construction began in 2021. The library is being built in one of the most recognizable green spaces in the neighborhood, Jackson Park. Jackson Park is one of the few places in the city that offers green space with access to a beach and gardens. A group called Protect Our Parks in Chicago has the mission to preserve the city's parks and has emphasized the importance of preserving green space. This group strongly opposes the construction of this building and states that the federal government failed to properly review the environmental impact of this project. Professors from nearby University of Chicago have also asked for the location of this building to be moved. This is a quote from Richard Epstein, a law professor at the university who strongly supports the Protect Our Parks organization. He states, this is a world-class park put together by Frederick Law Olmsted, and now somebody wants to gut it when in fact, they can put it in a perfectly serviceable location somewhere else. The development of these massive projects reminds citizens who have lived in Hyde Park for many years about the controversial Hyde Park Kenwood renewal project that transformed the neighborhood in the 50s and 60s. Some of those in the community, they're still fighting to keep the project from happening. As CBS 2's Marisa Vajra reports, critics of the Obama Presidential Center have long argued against its location. A few blocks up from where the Obamas broke ground was a group of Southside neighbors undeterred. making sure their fight against the ripple effects of the Obama Presidential Center gets noticed. On the ground, some communities are bracing for gentrification. Yes, they're going to displace all of us, that they can. And they're already out asking people to sell their property. That's not right. The Community Benefits Agreement Coalition argued successfully last year to add and protect affordable housing in neighboring Woodlawn. But the group says there's been no movement, and it wants to add Oakland, Kenwood, South Shore, Washington Park, and Greater Grand Crossing to have those same protections. The legacy of this president is important, it's iconic, and it's relevant to Chicago. But that does not pay people's rent. Not even the air was spared, where someone flew the message, stop cutting down trees, move the OPC. The canopy over Jackson Park is also a part of the fight in court, led by Protect Our Parks attorney Richard Epstein. We thought our case was extremely strong, uh, particularly since there were many trees, hundreds that were going to be cut down, roads that were going to be disrupted, and lives that were going to be in many ways ruined. Thus far, the legal challenges haven't been successful, but Epstein's working on another appeal. All the while, the Obama Presidential Center moves forward, but some stay skeptical. And that's why we're here at this ribbon cutting. You can cut the ribbon, but don't cut us out. That coalition that planned today's rally is working this week to try and get more of those protections for neighborhoods when it comes to affordable housing. They are organizing town halls for the coming days in South Shore. They want to hear from residents and then take those concerns to Mayor Lightfoot's office. We are live in Hyde Park. Marisa Vedra, CBS 2 News. Hyde Park was established by Paul Cornell in 1853. He purchased 300 acres of land along the shore of Lake Michigan in the lower south and east rim of the city. The proximity to the lakefront provided an ideal location for imports and beautiful scenery. In 1889, Hyde Park became annexed by the city of Chicago. This process helped the neighborhood receive municipal benefits and services, such as public transit, law enforcement, trash collection, and much more. Hyde Park became popularized because of the University of Chicago. The university was founded in 1890 with the help of endowments from Rockefeller and other wealthy people in the Chicago area. Hyde Park became a bustling and rapidly growing town. Hyde Park became an area of art, scenic parks such as Jackson Park, Kenwood Community Park, and Harold Washington Park. Like all cities, the depression posed serious challenges to the neighborhood. 
During these times, the city of Chicago saw major economic and social shifts. Eventually, the American city became unattractive to many people. Properties in Hyde Park and Kenwood, along with other nearby areas, saw an influx of black migrants. Sections that were traditionally dominated by white individuals became more densely populated with African American people. Sadly, the racist attitudes during this time only printed a poor and unfair depiction of the city of Chicago. Many of the social groups were determined to create change within their communities by tackling issues of racial tension. The early focus of the Hyde Park Kenwood Community Commission was to address the rapid deterioration of the homes that had occurred in the recent decades. The HPKCC efforts had been noticed and other public initiatives were created. Groups like the Southeast Chicago Commission were built on the idea that Hyde Park needed a large-scale clearance of blighted areas. The SECC teamed up with the University of Chicago to get this project rolling. Key federal government legislatures like the Housing Act of 1937 promoted a one-to-one -one ratio of demolition and reconstruction. For every new housing unit built, an old standard housing unit was demolished. This helped improve the percentage and quality of housing. Legislature, when left up to local authorities, caused exploitation of minority families. In 1947, Illinois Redevelopment and Relocation Act further popularized the idea of redevelopment and slum clearance. The original Hyde Park and Kenwood redevelopment was designed by Harry Weiss in 1956. Harry was the lead architect and planner behind the Hyde Park redevelopment. Harry may be the man who is most closely associated with the project, but it was many public initiatives from groups like the Southeast Chicago Commission, the Hyde Park Kenwood Community Conference, and the University of Chicago that got the attention of investors and made the redevelopment possible. The Hyde Park Kenwood Renewal Project wanted to target the housing situation. Old, deteriorated buildings started to plague the city and its appeal. Houses were crammed full of people, and open space was scarce. During the 50s in America, city dwellers started to flee to the suburbs. This migration forced municipalities to look at what needed to be changed in order to accommodate. Not only were cities becoming run down, but the suburbs offered benefits that were more attractive and less crowded. People started to value the open space and traffic-free roads the suburbs offered. The homes were built better and they were not stacked on one another. Harry Weiss wanted to reinvent the idea of renewal. Typically, architects at this time wanted to erect buildings that would stand tall. Weiss believed that architecture doesn't have to separate itself from nature or earth. Weiss's idea was to construct townhomes that only stood two or three stories tall. These small homes had no intention of holding the same amount of people as the previous ones. Therefore, this project was highly controversial. The structural stability of these townhomes was an improvement, but ultimately, they ended up decreasing the number of available homes for people. This outcome could be considered worse than before depending on who you are. For the wealthy and upper middle class residents, this may seem to be better. However, this change did not improve the situation for the current community members. The Hyde Park Kenwood Renewal Project displaced an estimated 4,000 plus families from their homes. Nearly 60% of these families were black. The recent influx of black families and the decline of the neighborhood were looked at as a cause and effect correlation. Whites did not want an urban center dominated by minorities. Fear mongering was a common practice used to get people on board with large scale urban development. The idea that blacks and immigrants would move in and take over a predominantly white neighborhood and run it down was popular. This ideology influenced policies and decision makers to create a neglectful attitude towards black families. The African American community was blamed for the economic decline at the time. Unfortunately, the nature of America has been dismissive of the well-being of black families. The oppression blacks faced during this era in Chicago highlights the de facto discrimination that is embedded deep into the hearts of American cities. As we see from the data provided by Social Explorer, the racial demographics before and after the redevelopment of High Park are drastically different. In the following years after the redevelopment, black population decreased below 
making the neighborhood once again white dominated. Hyde Park Urban Renewal Project and urban renewal projects around the country provide both negative and positive impacts. The neighborhood of Hyde Park was transformed physically, socially, and for the benefit of the wealthy. For Hyde Park, economic prosperity came at the expense of the current residents. The Hyde Park Kenwood Renewal Project and other large scale redevelopment projects around the nation challenge us to think how these projects might actually benefit the people who live there. When we attempt to fit everyone under one umbrella, people slip through the cracks. This project serves as a testament to how large-scale urban renewal projects fail to consider the needs of current residents. Half of the city is made up of buildings and streets, but the other half are people, people who live there. And this is often a fact that is overlooked.